So hello my friends, Devon Lennox here, Photography PX. In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through how I select images, AKA cull photos, my, uh, my entire selection workflow from start to finish. All right, so here we are in Capture One that you're seeing on screen. Uh, so for the shoot that uh, we'll be putting, we'll be posting some behind the scenes photos, uh, you guys will see me basically with the same desk setup that I'm, I'm, I'm working on right here. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm actually shooting tethered to my MacBook Pro, and I'm using my MacBook Pro as basically the mediator um, for holding images and um, basically my SD card, so to speak. Uh, not only that, I'm also using it as a secondary display, and I'll do a more in-depth video on, on setting up Capture One and things of that nature. But suffice to say, I, am, I imported these photos directly after they were shot to this application, so you're seeing that. Um, there are a lot of different applications that you can do this kind of selection process. You could do Adobe Lightroom. Uh, you could do Capt uh, Capture One Pro like I'm using right now. Uh, you can do Adobe Camera Raw. Um, you can do the Sony's app. You can do pa Panasonic's app. There's a lot of different applications that do this. Um, but suffice to say, I'm going to show you guys um, my selection workflow. And this is the first time I'm seeing these images. I didn't, you know, when I was shooting yesterday, I didn't look at the images besides when I was composing. That was it. And I scrolled briefly just to make sure my creative team, uh, they were seeing images and, and things of that nature from, a, from their creative standpoint. So hair and makeup and wardrobe that they, they, if they saw an issue, they could fix it. But I wasn't looking at the images. So this is the first time that I'm looking at them. So this is going to be a very much a, um, I guess it's going to be very much uh, like my first impressions, my uh, my uh, like actual reaction. So you're going to see all the images, good, bad, ugly, whatever. We're going to just do the entire workflow. Uh, this video may be a two-parter just because it might be kind of long. So um, I'll, I'll kind of keep that in mind as we go along. But this is going to be my entire workflow. And I'm going to explain why I'm selecting certain images. I'm also going to show you how I get from uh, 600 images that we have here. Um, uh, narrowing, narrowing that down to the top four or five images, maybe maybe six images altogether. So uh, stay tuned and we'll, we'll get that started right now. So this is an image I just put on screen just so you guys have an idea what it looks like, but this is not the first image. So let's actually scroll over to the first image, okay? Um, I'm gonna go through this kind of quickly. Um, one of the things that I will kind of like share with you guys with Capture One, um, is that you basically use the back, the forward and backward keys to move forward or backwards. Um, and then I'm, all I'm gonna do is just press the three key on my keyboard to basically star or flag an item, uh, or a picture in this case, so that I can come back to this picture and then I can start narrowing them down selectively. So the first round that I go through, I just go through all the images to see which ones are just okay. And then from there, I go from okay to good. And then I go from good to great. And then I go from great and I put them in a more a smaller uh, subsection catalog. And then I look at them side by side to find the final images. So that's my workflow personally. I don't know if you guys will find value in that. I don't know if you guys will find value in this video at all, but um, not everyone showcases their workflow. So I'd like to showcase that to you guys today. So uh, we're just gonna kind of speed through. Um, I'll just either basically say no or yes. And if I say yes or maybe, I'll let you guys know why. So no, definitely not. Nope, nope, nope. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, so with these ones, um, why I'm selecting those ones, and we'll, we'll kind of refine it down a little bit. Uh, I just like the, uh, the three quarter positioning. Um, and in the, in the first round, I'm saying maybe right now because I don't know what I captured. Um, and this is the same exact process that models and I go through after we do a shoot. Uh, we're not really entirely sure what we captured. So it, we're, we're kind of hesitant on the selections. Uh, so we usually select a lot more images <laughs> initially. Uh, and then we work our way down because I have no idea what we captured. This is the first time I'm looking through these images. Um, but if I find one that's compelling, I'll let you guys know. Uh, but I'm, I'm just liking these images because, uh, you know, I'm not sure what we captured and, you know, the three quarter shot and this little headshot turning action uh, isn't bad. So we're going to we're going to keep those. Um, yes, that one's good. Uh, that one's OK. OK, that one's OK. I'll take that one. Uh, I'm not totally convinced. That one's good. I like that one. Yeah, it's a great three quarter shot. Really shows off the flowers, the hair. Hmm. No, not really feeling those. Not really feeling any of these. Hmm, nope. I go through these pretty fast. Um, so, <laughs> you know, brace your eyes. 
I just got I'm just going, you guys will notice I'm just going backwards and forwards. But, you know, after a while, you, after, after doing this, you, uh, you get to a point where you just kind of know your style. Um, no. And for me, like the biggest thing that I'm looking at, so, you know, as I go through these kind of speedily, what, like I kind of explain what I'm really looking at. I'm looking at the model's eye connection uh, to me as the viewer. I'm looking at how she connects with the camera, camera and then, you know, the emotion that she's giving in that moment. Um, I'm also looking to make sure the pose and the composition is flattering towards her. And then also the theme that we had, making sure that we can see all the elements um, and that it, it suits that. Uh, outside of that, sometimes I look at lighting as well to make sure the lighting isn't bad and I can recover it in post-production. That's something I look at as well. Um, but those are the main things I'm looking at. You know, it, it's always expression for me first. You know, the expression has to be good. Um, if the expression isn't good, the photo's bad. Uh, if the photo's out of focus, the photo is usually also bad too, to a certain extent. But um, yeah, expression for me, is, it's everything, man. So, no, really not feeling those. Uh, that's okay, it's a good makeup shot. Um, not really feeling those. No. That one's okay. Another good makeup, like three quarter shot, yeah. Shows the hair really well. Oh, that one's good. Mm. Uh, so for this one, I just like the emotion. So you guys will kind of notice as I go back and forth between this, like when her mouth isn't open, to when her mouth is open. Uh, I don't know, it just kind of relaxes the face a little bit and makes it look a little bit, I don't know, more intimate or it's hard to explain exactly what that mouth open um, kind of does, but it doesn't, it's not like it's serious. It, there's a little bit more of a, um, I don't know, like a, a joy and like a, a sense of like, um, not necessarily security, but there's like, there's just more a sense like we're connecting more. I don't know. Um, it's going to be hard to explain this because this is one of those things as a photographer, this is the hardest thing to do uh, to explain what we see in an image. But, um, you know, ultimately, I think this is important. So I want to I want to still try to somewhat explain this to you guys. But um, yeah, it, there's just a way that she's looking at me, the viewer. And when I captured this, that like we connect in this moment. And I like that it, it fits my it fits like, uh, I don't know, my my vibe, if you will. <laughs> it's hard to explain. Oh, that's a great makeup shot. I like that one. That's great. Oh, yes. See, this is what I'm talking about. So the, the slight mouth open, I don't know what that does, but it just relaxes her face. It makes her look more open. Um, yeah, so, yeah, it, it just makes a big difference. I, I can't explain what that does, but it just, yeah, it relaxes the face. And it, it's we didn't want it to be serious for this. We want it to be kind of uh, uh, woodsy, and she's just intimate, and she's just having a good time, and she's she's playful to a certain extent. Uh, but like the modelly playful. Um, okay, I'm gonna kind of go through these kind of fast. I'm not really liking the fact that we're hiding all the makeup here, the lips. No, I don't like these. Not liking those. No. Okay, we may get something over here. No, I'm still not liking those. No. Okay. Grab some coffee. Okay, nope. But yeah, this process for me is like, could be 10 minutes. But I'm explaining, I'm, I'm gonna do my best to explain as we kind of go along. So, uh, you know, bear with me on that front. But yeah, this is literally how fast I cull images or like select images. It's called culling if you guys are curious on what it's actually called. It's the photographer's term. No. And my, my computer is gonna start freaking out a little bit. So you guys will be hearing some fan noise right now as, it, as we start to go ham going through these images. Um, no, I don't like the hand positioning quite yet. That's better. Yeah, hands are one of those things too that if it, it's, if it's, if they're not positioned properly, this would be a whole nother, whole nother thing to talk about. If they're not positioned properly, properly relative to, uh, the camera, they can look like lobster claws really quick. Um, and yeah, hands are really hard to position because you want them to be very gentle and soft. You don't want them to be blocky like this. Uh, it just looks really bad. So, um, yeah, that's one of the things I'm looking for in these sets of images right now. So I kind of explain that for you guys. Um, yeah, the hands are really tough to position. Not everyone has great hands. Okay, so that was the first look. So let's move on to the next look. Oh, yeah, there we go. That's great. Those are awesome. Uh, so for me, um, 
so a couple of things I'm looking at. I'm looking at the symmetry um, in terms of the garment. I love the hair flowing in the wind. We had a little fan on the on the uh, screen right hand side, I guess. Yeah, screen right hand side. Um, and uh, I just love that hand positioning. It makes her jaw structure look fantastic. Yeah, these are these are great. Uh, these are awesome. So yeah, I'm gonna just I'm gonna basically flag all of these ones, um, and then I'll go back through in a second uh, in a second round to narrow them down because I like that pose. Okay, so uh, with these ones, I'm gonna do more of a full de deconstruction on this, but essentially we just had the parasol in the background. Um, so you guys will basically be seeing that. It's just a prop that we, our makeup artist had. Um, and we just put that in the background to add some more texture. When you're shooting in studio, props are really everything. If you don't have like amazing wardrobe and you know sick hair and stuff like that. Um, we had a lot of those elements, but at the same time, we it, it still needed a little bit more, so. Um, so, just looking at composition at this point. Yeah, I like that little head tilt. Uh, okay. All right, okay, I kind of like the mouth closed there a little bit as well. I don't like the head in that angle. That's not her strong side. That one's okay. Okay, we threw some flowers in there, maybe. Nope, keep on kind of scrolling along through here. I made a huge difference. You guys can see the before and after difference there. It makes a huge difference. Um, that one's okay. Yeah, that one's okay too. I like the hand positioning. Looks kind of more of that intimate kind of vibe. Yeah, that one's cool too. I like that one. That one's okay. Um, well, one of these, oh, wow, that's great. Yeah, I love that one. That one's great. Again, looking at the symmetry, I'm looking at the strength in the face, the, that little bit of an eye squint. Um, yeah, and then the symmetry, just the messiness of the hair, it just looks strong. And I, for me, as you know, I just, I saw the, ex the difference, the subtle difference in exposure there. And then her looking down with the little eye squint, it made, you know, it helps connect to the viewer is kind of what, what it does for me. Um, after I finish up this look, we'll, uh, we'll break this into a part two. Same kind of vibe there. Okay. Um, it's okay. Uh, can I just keep on? Oh, eyes closed. All right. Moving along. I like kind of the head tilt on that one. I like the way the hair is flowing on this one. That one's cool. Yeah, same thing with that. Just kind of like the head tilt and the uh, hair positioning. It's more of like a hair shot. I like that one too. Same for same same reason as before. Um, parasol is a little bit bright, but that's fine. No. Uh, uh, uh. No. We get a little bit of blackout. It's still rendering some of the images. Like the the hair movement there, that was great. Yeah, that classic messy, messy hair look. Yeah, that's great with the fan. Yeah, um, I like those ones. So I'm starting some of those ones as well. Yeah, this is just strong. Same reason the eye squint as before. Yeah, she did the eye squint on that one as well, which just looks super strong. That one's cool too. Okay. But yes, with that, we're gonna kind of just take a quick pause right here and I'm gonna break this into two parts. We still have a long way to go. We have a, maybe about, we're, I would say we're probably about halfway. Uh, we're a little bit over halfway. Um, so we'll, I, I, I'm excited to kind of show you guys the second look, but with that, we're gonna break it into a second part um, just so you guys can see the, the entire workflow for this. Um, so we'll be back here shortly, Devon Lennox Photography PX. We'll be back.